Welcome back. I'm Chelsea Woodall with your Eagle Sports Update this week. It's already hard enough for most students to excel in just their academics, but one student managed to dominate in her schoolwork and in her sport. This Winthrop athlete has set a school record and won a Big South Conference award. Kaylin McDonald has more. Jean Stroud is not just an English major with a 3.94 GPA, but she has also been named this year's Big South Women's Cross Country All Scholar Athlete of the Year. Stroud had the highest GPA out of all 12 teams in the conference. It was very exciting because when it comes time for the award ceremony, mostly it's your place in the meet that you just ran, and so it's not a surprise. But for those academic awards you don't know and so it's really exciting because it, it's a big surprise. Stroud broke Winthrop's 5k record on October 13th beating the old time by 18 seconds. I have a lot of goals still that I want to reach so this year is definitely an accomplishment but it's also just another base for next for my final year to do really well. But what about the team aspect of running cross country? It's a team sport in that there are the meets where you do score as a team and you get the lowest score wins. But then your teammates can't do their best without you pushing them in practice. So you have to work together all year long or else no one's going to get any better. This is Kayleen McDonald reporting for Winthrop Close Up. You can see Jean and her teammates running in the Division I Southeast Regionals at McAlpin Creek Park in Charlotte on Friday, November 9th. Well, behind every sporting event held at Winthrop, there's a team of students that put it all together. This week, reporter Brianna Robinson learned more about the interns of sports management. New coaches have sparked a huge interest in Winthrop Athletics this year, and as the crowds fill the stands, it's up to these guys to make sure that everything runs as smoothly as possible. Every year, we get quality students that come out of the program, and it, it teaches them from setups to game management, to, uh, to takedowns and, and what it takes to actually put on games uh, for 17 different sports. Every student in the sports management program is required to complete both a semester of field experience and a semester of interning, either on or off campus. Field experience is a three hour credit, uh, credit requirement. Like I said, you have to complete 120 hours work as opposed to the 560 that I'm doing now. Yeah, 560 is a lot. I'm doing it for the experience and I've learned a lot here over the past year. Sports management is one of the fastest growing majors here at Winthrop, but of course it's not as easy as it looks. I'm Brianna Robinson reporting for Winthrop Close Up. The next time you attend a sporting event here at Winthrop, take a second to appreciate all the work your classmates put in. Hockey fans across the country have been dealt another blow with the 2012 NHL lockout. On October 26th, the NHL canceled all the games to be played in November due to the disputes. In September, the NHL declared a lockout after having disagreements with the NHL Players Association over contract lengths, salary caps, free agency requirements, and players' portion of hockey-related revenue. Many NHL players have opted to play in other leagues across the globe until the dispute is settled. Hockey fans looking to watch a game can see some of their favorite players as ESPN has bought rights to air games from the European Continental Hockey League. Well, that's all for the sports updates we have for you this week. Join us next week to see what's spiking up with women's volleyball. Thanks, Chelsea. After the break, we'll show you dancers taking the stage. We show you what students are dancing about.
Welcome back to Winthrop Close-Up. I'm Timothy Coco. New dances from the Winthrop Dance Theater are showing students the way to move. Reporter Ted Patterson has more. Dance majors are constantly practicing their moves and techniques with the goal of becoming the best they can be. Their hard work will be showcased in this year's Winthrop Dance Theater concert. Um, you have to physically prepare by warming up, um, remembering the movement as well. The dancers must listen and take direction from the faculty choreographer so they can interpret the dance correctly. For this one, we're dancing to um, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Um, from the first rehearsal, she pretty much told us to think of the first, like the one thing that made us the most happy. What makes you happy and, and just being happy in your dancing and just experiencing things. For each performance, the dancers will wear costumes that go along with the storyline of the dance. They're definitely um, a big part of the show. You know, you have to match the lights to the costumes. Um, uh, for one of the pieces I'm in, it's based on statues, so we kind of have like a marble statuesque costume. With the performance coming soon, Fetner had this to say. It's very inspiring. Even if you're not a big fan of modern, you should still come in and the experience will be a very good experience for you because it'll, it will shape your, you know, outlook on the arts. The dancers will be showcasing their talents at the Winthrop Dance Theater from November 7th to November 11th. I'm Ted Patterson reporting for Winthrop Close Up. To find out more about future dance shows, check the Performance Art Schedule site at winthrop.edu. If you're looking to break away from campus and are an avid movie watcher, reporter Mike Zumack can tell you where to see some short films locally. The York County Arts Council debuts the Underexposed Film Festival this year. The festival features many reputable short films that have been shown at major festivals such as Cannes, Sundance, Tribeca, as well as smaller regional ones and even Oscar nominees. One of the event's main organizers is Karen Collins, a Winthrop graduate and film industry veteran. Her film credits include Gettysburg, A Thin Red Line, Glory, and Steel Magnolias. When I looked at the quality of what they do down at the Arts Council, right now they've got a Salvador Dali hanging on the wall. So we needed the Salvador Dali's of independent short films, and that's what we got. There will even be a film from Ron Howard's Project Imagination, sponsored by Canon. Winthrop students interested in volunteering for the event should know that there are many positions still needing to be filled. Uh, we always need volunteers to help us with box office, with the bar, with putting our packages together, even with just putting posters up, doing the grassroots marketing, uh, getting the information out to the public. Anybody looking to help out with this or any others can contact the Arts Council on their webpage. With photographer Lauren McCoy, I'm Mike Zumack, reporting for Winter Close-Up. The York County Arts Council hosts events throughout the year. More information can be found on their website at www.yorkcountyarts.org. From visual arts to audible ones, I want to find out how to keep your instrument in good shape so you can continue to crank out quality tunes. Musical instruments need quality care in order to be played proficiently. Sarita Maxwell has taught music educators on basic instrument repair at Winthrop University and gives some helpful tips for the cold and flu season. Avoid extreme temperatures. Too hot and too cold is not good for your instrument. Try to maintain a, a nice, comfortable room temperature, about 70 degrees. Wash the mouthpiece with warm water uh, once a week to try and remove all excess germs and saliva. There are several shops around the area that give quality instrument repair and also sell various musical items. Paul Grobuski of Grobuski Musical Services specializes in brass and woodwind repairs. We can do anything from like basic repair uh, to, to complete overhauls. For those who just like jamming on their guitars or drums, you should check out Woody's Music. We specialize in accessories, amplification, stringed instruments, keyboards and drums. We also have a full line repair shop which deals with repairs, restorations, and simple maintenance procedures. Take care of your instrument before your next performance and have fun rocking out. 
That's all for this week's art and entertainment. Tune in next week to see how the big screen comes to Rock Hill. After the break, we'll show you news from around the world. Now for a look at what's happening in world news. Two of Britain's royals are on the road. Prince Charles and his wife Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, are in Australia. It's the second stop on their Diamond Jubilee tour on behalf of Queen Elizabeth II. Their final stop is New Zealand. Many parts of China's northwest, northwest region have witnessed temperature drops and sandstorms due to the incoming cold, cold air from Siberia. The sky turned dim and presented a color of pale yellow, yellow with a visibility of no more than 200 to 500 meters. Vehicles on highways had to slow their speed. People across northern and eastern China are seeing snowfall that is bringing down temperatures and inconveniencing local traffic. According to estimations by the local meteorological department, average snowfall has reached 10.3 millimeters. The, the traffic department closed a total of five highways in the city. The heavy snows also trapped five tourists on a section of the Great Wall. The mayor of a New Jersey coastal town says he sees progress in the cleanup after Superstorm Sandy. But he knows it will be devastating when people, come, when people start to come back home to Belmar. Crews are still moving sand off the streets. The mayor says sand will have, will, will have to be shifted, sifted of debris. Oh, again. Sifted of debris. Everybody else. Wait, it's great. It's be specific. <laughs> Everybody else. Sifted off. Up, smiling, looks like you're happy to be here. Because his story is the last one. The mayor of a New Jersey coastal town says he sees progress in the cleanup after Superstorm Sandy. But he knows it will be devastating when people start to come back home to Belmar. Crews are still moving sand off the streets. The mayor says the sand will have to be sifted off debris before putting, putting it back on the beach. He says the goal is to rebuild the Broadwalk by Memorial Day, which is the start of the town's much needed tourist season. Thank you for tuning in this week. Tune in next week to see if the 15-minute rule is just a myth. If you have any comments or suggestions, email us at winthropcloseup at winthrop.edu or Winthrop Close Up's Facebook page.